give us your name, height, and weight, bud. So I am Quentin Patterson, um, and my height is five foot six and a half, and I am a classic physique competitor. Okay. And what's the last show you did, bud? The last show I did was Team Universe um, of last year, and I did Western just a week before that, so to qualify. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and tell us, actually, before we get into the background stuff, let's do it this way. Go ahead and give us a little bit about, uh, tell us about what you trained today, the movements you did, and what you like about the movements you did that day. So the best thing that we did today was a chest and shoulder workout, and I loved it because I mean, for me, chest and shoulders are, I mean, my shoulders are a dominant feature for me, but my chest has always been the elusive factor. So I had to like really understand how to not be armsy during all my movements and to really develop my chest because my chest is short. So being able to understand how to really squeeze and get my shoulders inactive in my movement was really, really big for me. So we did some incline pressing, um, which has helped actually bring my chest in a th really thick fashion and bring it over the top. Um, it's, it's a challenging motion due to my two shoulder surgeries that I had, but it's become one of my favorites um, because it's not only mentally challenging, but it's, it really physically brings me justice to the top of my chest and gives a lot of depth. We kept it to about a 10 to, 10 to 12 range the entire time. Um, the idea was to get to failure. Um, we did some shoulder uh, movements. We did a, a really interesting one in the video um, that took place on the last one, and that was doing a uh, rear delt raise and then into a lateral into a front raise. And that's one of my fav favorite motions because it gets the entire shoulder. It's not a weight-bearing one, but it really, really helps with contractions and squeezes, so I love it. So let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about uh, what are your future plans this year for show-wise and stuff like that? So the big plan is to become a pro um, in the show of Junior Nationals, which is June 19. Um, and the reason why I chose that show is because it's two months before I get married. So being able to really get into it and become a pro um, for many different reasons, which I'm sure we'll get into later, um, is really what I'm, what I'm after. So I'm going to compete at Classic uh, in Class B, and that's where hopefully I'll tear it up and receive what I need. Awesome. How many times have how many times have you competed in the past and how did you do it? So I have had um, three different coaches in my career. And um, the first one I had, um, we, I competed with him at only maybe three shows. Um, and then my other coach um, that I had, I did another probably five or six shows. And then Kevin, which is my new coach, Kevin DeHaven, um, I've done two with him. So I've been competing for a while. Um, but it's all about the right approach to it, and that's really helped me grow a lot in this sport. Awesome. Um, let's go a bit, uh, talk a little bit how you got into the industry, what, uh, about in your background, like what drove you into it, what you think set you up for success in the industry, and what your final goal is with it, stuff like that. So, um, realistically, what even started me into my whole career was, um, I had a whole bunch of friends after you know high school that you know we wanted to do something, and everyone was like, "Man, like we should try bodybuilding." Because I think one of them had done it at the time. It was like ten people, so we had like we called the Midnight Crew, and so he kind of talked everyone into it, and we're like, "Okay, let's let's do it. Let's do it all together." And then the same day we decided to start, I got into a really bad car accident, um, and my airbag blew my shoulder apart, and so that sucked for me. <laughs> and I watched everyone kill it. And they did really, really well. And I sat on the sidelines, and um, I kind of used it as like motivation to get back. Um, and I dabbled in it, and I was like, you know what? I'm really going to try to go after my goal, and I'm going to try to do a show. Despite everyone doing it and not doing it anymore, I'm still going to do it. Um, and so I ended up doing it. There's one person that was left out of like the 10 people that chose to do it. Um, and you know, and I did it, and I didn't quite know how I felt. I liked the I liked the the stage, and I was like, okay, but I'm a little nervous. And then I did my posing thing, and and I remember uh, Jay Cutler. Um, he when I talked to him, he was like, you're like a, a mini Kai, and you know that gave me a really big boost emotionally. And I was like, well, maybe I could try another and, and and do it and participate. So then I did another show, and then another show, and I figured out that I really do like the sport. And then eventually I came into the dreams that I have now and to wanting to be the, one of the best posers of all time. And, you know, that became kind of my niche. Go ahead. Uh, now you are an amazing poser. Thank you. What drove you into the, uh, the bodybuilding, the posing aspect so much? What do you feel like that you, um, you're so passionate about with the posing aspect of it? 
So I'm a little different in terms of, um, I mean, life was really hard for me. So um, one thing I did in sports was I channeled my emotion into my sport. So, and it helped me, you know, like a therapy, like no different than someone working out in a gym, it gives you an outlet. Um, and so for me, I think my style is different because I pose everything together and it's such a chained movement, um, but it's so free. And, you know, and that's kind of how, how I felt at the time when I started emotionally and being able to put myself in a space where I'm able to just move and just be, you know, fluent but different and be confident in the moment, um, I think really gave me, you know, a release that I didn't have. And a lot of people ask me, do I have a dancing background? But I just call it my spirit walking free. You know what I mean? It's, it's just doing what it does. And so I do a lot of freestyle to interpret. Um, and, I, and I looked at a lot of people over the years and, I, and I'm self-taught and I studied and I studied and I studied and I like different things from certain people and others I did not. And I decided like I like them but I didn't want to imitate all of them. And I wanted to bring my own style and emotion to the process. So when I started doing that, I actually got really good at posing. And I was like, I could really, you know, be different. And that's where I got a lot of my passion from is just myself and just trying different things out and failing and succeeding and, and just going through that trial and error process. And it was a beautiful thing. That's so awesome, Drew, because so many people, that's the, the biggest, um fright of the sport or the thing they hate the most is the posing and they don't want to put time and effort into it, you know, and stuff. So. Um, so let's talk about that because that kind of feeds into, you know, go ahead and tell people a little about your current job, what you do and stuff. Like that so I am a, um, I'm a personal trainer um, as well as a motivational speaking person. I say person because we're all people no matter your status, no matter how good you are, we all need people. <laughs> and then... Uh, I am also a mentor to different kids, um, as well as a posing coach and a bodybuilding coach. Um, so I kind of have a lot of niches, but you know, you shouldn't be prison to one. So be multi-dimensional. So do you mind going into um, when you got into the counseling and stuff, but talking about you know you had a very rough start as a kid and how it affected you and how it brought you into your career, or the different aspects of what you're doing today. So um, for me. Um, the hardest part about growing up was uh, my mom was murdered when at the age of 23. Um, so it feels weird to say, but I've actually outlived my mom um, at the age of 29. And um, at the time, I had no father figure, and um, my dad was non-existent. Uh, my mom had uh, two other kids, and they had we all had different dads. And um, I ended up living with my grandmother. Um, and at the time, that was really good for me, but I was in a very confusing stage because I didn't know what was going on. And uh, I ended up living with um, this lady who we thought was safe. And she was my guardian and she was not. And I was child abused in every type of way, physically, emotionally. Um, I mean, from locked in my room um, without lights and just terrified for different reasons um, to having people attack me randomly in the night. Um, and I went through just a series of things. Um, and I was beaten all the time, even like to the point of like unconsciousness multiple times. And uh, through it all, um, I this is actually a really good story because um, it'll help a lot of people. Um, when I was in that moment, um, my grandmother, who taught me limited about Jesus, but she tried to teach me as much as she could, but because of the distance, it was very hard for her um, because I was isolated a lot. Um, the only time that I ever came out of my sheets, because I, I used to think that my sheet was like my protector. And, you know, it gave me the iron defense. If I got hit, it lessened the blow. So I'd live, I'd literally live underneath my sheets. Um, long story short, the only time I'd come out was when the moon was shining on, and it was full and it peeked into my room. And I thought that's where, you know, in my opinion, that's where God lived. And I'd talk to the moon and I'd go to sleep and, uh, and I never got hurt any time during that period of time. And that type of comfort is what I wanted to bring to bodybuilding in terms of people being able to be themselves and to be able to be vulnerable and for it to be okay. Um, so that really, being able to be a bodybuilder isn't my only phase and my only niche into teaching. It's, it's something that will help me be able to teach in a world renowned perspective so that I'm able to help so many lives of so many backgrounds so they can actually be a champion of their world and find a place where they feel safe. Fame or for, no. or for a different reason. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, to me, although fame is beautiful and having accolades and people, you know, practically worship you or fall out like Michael Jackson concerts, it's beautiful, but it's not what I want. Um, and 
people can argue that it is or it isn't, but for me, um, just having moments where I felt uh, powerless um, was, a, was a huge struggle for me. And uh, one of the greatest lessons that my grandmother t ever taught me was you can either live in a world where people take your power or you can create power. And so I would rather be able to create power to so many lives um, and not hold my internal treasures in and be able to help people understand why they can be this or why they can be that. It doesn't matter if you're a male or female, as long as you find comfort in this life and you're living the best possible life you can be. And so for me, having you know the, uh, the availability to be in certain key positions and hold certain titles, it's so that I'm able to have the credential to go. I can help you, I can inspire you, yada, yada, yada. You have the complete story. So for me, I have to have a IFBB title to reach in, in different places that I never could or, or I would struggle to get there. Um, that will be you know, the huge thing for me. That would be my type of fame uh, is just the lives that I would affect. That's all I care about. That's awesome. That's very cool. And it's very inspiring that so many people, no matter what religion you are, no matter what you, you know, doesn't matter. This is well, okay. So the first two shows that we did were kind of like testers because we did one show where it was like, all right, well, I got two weeks to work with you. So before your show. And uh, so we decided to, you know, kind of test some things out. We wouldn't bring me in full. And then the next show, we're like, okay, we'll try this and try that. And But the off-season gave us a good opportunity to be able to do different things and kind of play with my body more um, so that now it's more of a safer bet going into nationals, um, which is going to be amazing. But anyway, uh, right now my current calories are about 4,300 um, in – and I think that it's good for me because, you know, Ke Kevin's really good because he'll be like, okay, you know, I'll send pictures weekly or biweekly. And, you know, based on my performance, uh, which is always A1, by the way, because we are on the money. Um, but <laughs> but it's – he'll be like, okay, well, we need to tweak this or we'll tweak that. And so we'll have, like, you know – four days of, you know, where it'll be like, we'll call them high days. And then we'll have like two low days and then I'll send a picture to see how we look. And then we'll go accordingly. And we added just a little bit of cardio in to keep me, you know, keep me a little bit trimmer. Um, but he, we don't do unnecessary fat. So if we have it, it's, it's okay. We got to change up things and make sure that my body is just on the money. But as far as um, getting down, I think that he wants to, I think the difference between my other preps is he wants to keep me higher in food. Um, because at the end, I was going to unbelievably low deficits and having extreme cardio, and my emotions were down. And, um, and it took a lot to, you know, mentally every day to fight for it. Um, but this time, I think he, he wants to put me in a place where I'm three weeks out, and I look good. I'm 14 weeks out right now, but he wants to put me in a position where, you know, three weeks out, we're ready, and all we got to do is just trim me down just – like almost nothing and just make it work and and just basically i think probably i'll end up maybe around 1800 calories maybe a little less maybe a little more we'll see how i look and you know he's the he's the magician he'll make it happen and i'll just follow <laughs> all the time my grandmother no matter what because i love my grandmother um and uh my mom uh Lori, who has been a huge inspiration. Uh, she's my stepmother, um, but she was really good friends with my mom while she was alive. And uh, I think that if my mom could pass the torch to anyone, it would definitely be her. And uh, this other woman that I call my mom, her name is Heidi Hoffman. And she really, you know, uh, when I was growing up and I was in those transitional stages with my grandmother, Dr. Hoffman and Heidi Hoffman, they, they gave me the love that I needed as a father and mother figure um, at the time. And they still do today. And they're just such beautiful people. And, and of course, my lovely fiance. And, uh, yeah, and you for just having me. So I'm, I'm very grateful my coach, Kevin. So. And, and I know now nothing is as it seems. Nothing is as it seems